I don't wanna waste your time, so let me just show you that Premiere Pro has a whole drop-down menu up in the top left devoted to markers. What we're going to focus on is everything below this add marker option. Right here we have add marker, and I can already see that if I hit M on my keyboard, it will automatically create a marker. So down here on the timeline, if I don't highlight any clips, so I'm gonna click into some negative space and hit M, it will automatically create a marker. By double-clicking the marker, it brings up this menu where you can add notes and leave comments and you can also change the color of the marker. Now we have a marker right here, but I can't read what I wrote. So let's say I wanted to make a note to an editor for this entire section and say, hey, you need to add an overlay for this entire section. So if I hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows and click the marker, now I can extend the beginning and ending of this marker. Another key feature of this is you can now read the text of the marker. Another way that you could add a marker is in your program monitor, if you click this add marker icon, it will add a marker. And that same icon is over on the left in your timeline to add a marker too. As a reference, let me go back up to this markers and the next options below this are go to next marker and go to previous marker. If I just hit shift M, it will go to the next marker. So watch what happens when I hit shift M, goes to the next marker. If I hit shift M again, there is a marker on my clip. You can add markers to the entire timeline or you can add them to the specific clips. So let's say I want to line this text up better, but I want to mark it on my clip. So I'll highlight the clip and I will hit M. Notice what happened. I did not add the marker to the timeline. I added the marker inside the clip right there. And if I were to hit Shift Command M, it goes back to that marker. If you want to clear your markers, you can right click and clear markers once the playhead is over the marker. Another way that you could do this is if I double click and bring this up in my monitor, I could right click right here and clear markers. So I'll clear that right there. Another scenario might be that you wanna delete specific markers. In that case, you would hold Shift and select two markers at the same time, right click and clear selected markers. And you also have the option of double clicking the marker and hitting delete within the pop-up menu. Now, before I move on, I do think it's important to address how to import comments from Frame.io as markers on the timeline inside Premiere Pro. So if I hop over to Frame.io.com, here we have a video that was shared as a presentation and John Doe, the producer, wants to add a comment to replace a shot right here. If I hit send, that comment comes up at the specific timecode of that video. And if I go back to Premiere Pro, it automatically updates and is shown to me inside Frame.io inside Premiere Pro. By the way, if you don't see your Frame.io window, just go up to Window, Review with Frame.io, and that will bring up this window. You may have to log into Frame.io, but once you get there, all you would need to do is find the video file that you are working on, click that, and here are the four notes. One thing you could do if you were addressing these notes is link playheads. And if I move the playhead inside Frame.io, it moves my playhead down on the timeline, which is super nice. That's one way to address the notes. But what I want to show you is how to import these comments as markers to the timeline. All I have to do is go up to this little icon right here where it says show comments. So I'm going to click that. Here we have all four comments. Right next to the little four comments right here, we have a download button. So download comments. If I click that, I can click import comments. So I'm going to click this and immediately I get all four comments as markers. So if I double click this, it says replace shot and it gives a timestamp of when that note was made and by who. Hopefully that tip helps a lot of you out there that utilize Frame.io in the revision process. And even if you don't use Frame.io, one tip I would give you is when you are addressing notes as an editor, start with the last one first and then move your way backwards. That way the time codes don't get messed up as you manipulate the footage. The other big point I wanna bring up here is the markers window. So underneath window, you wanna to go to markers and this will bring up thumbnails for every single marker that you have on the timeline. And the beauty of this is you can click any of these these thumbnails and it will automatically take your playhead to that marker. Imagine if you're doing narrative work and you have an hours long worth of a timeline 
this is a game changer when you need to quickly go back to a specific scene. One other thing to point out with the markers menu is that you can filter by color. So let's say you're a producer and you have specific notes about color correction. And let's say you want all of those notes to be red. So anytime you notate something about color that needs to be fixed, you make that a red marker. Anything that was in green was for your editor. Anything that's orange was something about sound. So you could use specific colors for different types of your edit to mark notes for different parts of it. Now let me go a little bit more in depth with what you can accomplish with this markers window. We have our markers on the timeline, but you may have been asking, what about the markers on the clips? If I click on a clip, like right here, I have a couple markers on my music and you can see them over here. And notice I had access to these once I clicked the clip. There is another marker that I have over here on this clip. Now again, this is a much smaller edit. If you have a huge timelines worth of material, finding the different clips and clicking on them probably isn't the best option. What you would probably want is a way to look at all of the markers on all of your clips at once. And you can do that. So I'm just gonna click off into the negative space again so we can see all of our normal timeline markers. But if you wanna see all of the markers that you've put on specific clips, go up here to the drop down menu in the markers and go to show all clip markers in sequence. Now I have access to viewing not only the markers that were on the music, but also this marker on this clip right here. I do realize that this is more in depth example, but it may be necessary for people with a bunch of clips on their timeline to have access to all of these at the same time. Now, one thing that can get confusing is if you start duplicating clips on your timeline, it will start duplicating the markers. To give you a very simplified example of this, I've created a sequence with only two markers in there. This B is red, the A is green. Now imagine you have a whole sequence filled with a bunch of different clips with markers on those specific clips, and you wanna create a cut on this clip. So for some odd reason, let's say I wanna create a cut right here, and I move this over like such. If you notice, right when I created that cut, it created a duplicate of the markers. On top of that, let me add a third edit to this clip. Things are kind of getting out of hand and unusable here in the markers window because I've made so many cuts to this clip. What I want to do is be able to see only the markers that are visible on the timeline. And you can do that by going up to markers and clicking sequence timecode. Now I'm one looking at the clip markers in the sequence, but I'm only shown here in the markers window markers that are physically seen on the sequence. So if I click A, it takes me to A. If I click B, it takes me to B. And this clip over here does have those markers on it. It's just that they're not in the sequence. And to prove that to you, let me just label this mango so you can really tell the difference. And if I click and drag this back out like this, Notice that the markers reappear here in the markers window. That's because they are now visible on the timeline. If I take this back out, they go away. I know that this process is niching down into a certain type of editor that would need to know this. Hopefully, if you have been in a situation where you have a bunch of different clips on the timeline, you go to your markers window and all of a sudden you're just flooded with a whole bunch of markers that really aren't on the timeline, maybe it might help by clicking sequence time code. Therefore, you're just shown the markers that are on clips that are physically present on your timeline. With that being said, let me showcase to you some solutions to issues you might encounter when using markers. And the biggest one that I think is one, deleting markers, and two, the movement of markers when you manipulate whole sections of your video. That first one, deleting the markers. For reference, like I showed you earlier in the video, if I right click on the timeline and go to clear markers, it will delete all of the markers on the timeline, but it will not delete the markers from the clips. I'm gonna undo that. If I want to delete all the markers from a specific clip, I can highlight that clip, right click on the timeline, and if I hit clear markers, because this clip is highlighted, it will now get rid of the markers on that clip. Where people will get into issues is when they want to delete specific markers from specific clips. For example, if I want to get rid of just this marker on this clip, I need to double click on the audio waveform and then go to my source monitor, right click, and 
clear selected marker. This can get really painstaking, and if somebody knows a better way to do this, please let me know in the comments. Now, if you did want to get rid of every single marker on all of your clips at once, all you would need to do is hit Command A on Mac or Control A on Windows and right click clear markers. If you notice, that did get rid of all of the markers on both this clip and my audio clip. It did not get rid of these markers up here because I have everything selected down on my timeline. Again, if I wanted to do both of them, I would delete these first, click in some negative space, right click, and then clear markers up top. And now I have gotten rid of all of the markers on my timeline. Now let me address the movement of markers when you move your footage. Let's say the producer comes in or you as an editor want to get rid of this whole section number two. And when I delete all of this, I want this last section marker to move over with it. If I highlight all of this material in section number two, I hit delete and I deleted it, but the section two marker didn't go away. And let's say I grab my track select forward tool and I grab all of the footage that's in that last section and I move it over like this. None of the markers moved with the footage. Now I'm gonna undo this and I wanna show you that if you go back up to your markers menu, you have two options available to you. You have ripple sequence markers and copy paste includes sequence markers. This one's kind of self-explanatory. I'll show it to you in a second. But for this first example, if I go to ripple sequence markers, let me check this and just so you can see, there's a little check mark by it to notify you that it's working right now. And if I were to do that same movement that I did before, but instead of just deleting it, what I'm going to do is right click and ripple delete. Notice that the markers moved with the footage. The only issue with this is now I have these markers that don't really represent anything. So I'm just going to clear selected marker, right click, clear selected marker, right click, clear selected marker. Again, this is an issue that I don't have a good fix for. I'm just showcasing to you that there is a way, if you do ripple delete, that the markers will move along with that ripple delete. This, I believe this also works with ripple trim. So if I were to take this and ripple um, trim edit out like this, notice that the marker moved along with it. If I ripple trim edit back in like this, again, the marker moves along with it. The other option up here with your markers is copy paste includes sequence markers. So I'm going to copy this whole back half, move my playhead, and then I'll paste by hitting Command V. It carried the markers along with it. So you can copy and paste markers and you can also move markers with ripple trimming. It's not perfect, but one solution I wanna show you that I've seen people do when it comes to moving markers with your footage is if you create an adjustment layer and add your markers to the adjustment layer above your footage. So anytime you move this footage, instead of looking at these markers, let's say I wanted to move this whole scene to a different spot in the cut. If I have all of my markers on an adjustment layer that's above the footage, I can now move that footage wherever I want to and maintain the same spot of those markers. Obviously this way isn't perfect, but it could get the job done. One last amazing trick that you can do with markers that I did not cover in this video is a process called automate to sequence. That's where you place your markers on the timeline, select your footage from the project bin, and then automatically click a button to put the footage to your markers on the timeline. It's something that can be super helpful if you wanna add music to the beat while you're listening to it. The reason I'm not covering that in this video is because I already created a whole video on this subject. If you wanna learn more about it, just click the video on the screen right now. If this video was helpful, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And until next time, my name's Javier Mercedes, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.